Hello everyone. Here we're going to be talking about solving sequential games. So in order to think about this first, we have to think about what a sequential game is. A sequential game is a game in which players move in sequence, one after the other. So if we think about a game like chess, where one player moves, then the other, then the other, then the other, that is a sequential game. Now, what this means that actors consider what other actors will do in response. If I'm playing you in a game of chess, I consider what you're going to do in response to me. You then consider what you're going to do in response to what I do. Now, this means that we can represent these kinds of decisions using what we call game trees. And we're going to see what these will look like in a few minutes. Now, game trees can be solved using a process of what we call backwards induction. Backwards induction is a procedure by which a player in a sequential game chooses a strategy by anticipating the strategies that will be um, ch chosen by other players in response to her choice. So if I move my one piece somewhere, you could respond by moving your piece in a different direction, for example, um, maybe to combat what mine would do in a game of chess. There are also a variety of different things that we can think about this with respect to firms and the kinds of decisions that they might make. If one firm is moving after another firm in terms of the first firm's pricing decision, we have to think about the firms making their decisions about prices in sequence, and they would do that by a process of backward induction in terms of solving what they should actually choose to do. Now, when we do this, we're going to then think about what we call an extensive form game which is a game portrayed by a game tree in which the sequence of the actions by the players is made explicit through that structure of the game. So the player at the top of this game tree, as we're going to illustrate it, they're going to be the first mover, and then subsequent players are going to move later down the tree in sequence after the first player. Now, we're going to contrast these in terms of the two different forms that we're accustomed to seeing. The first form is what we call a normal form representation, and that's the description of a game by a matrix of strategies with payoffs associated to each strategy profile. So the two by two games where we've seen the players with their strategies and the payoffs in each cell, those are the normal form games with the payoff tables that we've seen previously. This extensive form game, which we're now going to see, is going to be a different depiction which um, allows us to identify the sequential movement of the game through the depiction of the game tree. So, let's think about this. We have our 2x2 um, two two table of the game between Aram and Bina. We now want to think to ourselves, what would happen in this game if Aram were the first mover in the game? So, let's think about what Aram will do. We can um, write his name and depict what he will do. So, he is going to be at the top of the game tree. Now, the idea of a tree is um, a bit strange because it's actually going to be like an upside down tree. The, the, the top of the tree is over here and then the branches spread out, but they're spreading out from the top down. So um, don't worry about seeing the branches going down rather than up. So we've got Aram that I'm making his choice and he can choose whether or not he plants early or late. And then, after him, Bina moves. And Bina chooses, if Aram has planted early, she can plant early, or she can plant late. If Aram has planted late, then Bina can choose to plant early or late. So the game tree so far depicts each of the choices that they could make. Aram choosing to plant early and then in sequence, Bina choosing whether to go early or late. Aram choosing late and then Bina also in sequence choosing to go early or late. Then what we can think about is the fact that um, the choices they might make um, are going to then correspond to the payoffs that they'll eventually receive. So let's see this. If both players plant early, what are they going to get? They're going to get payoffs of four and four each. If Aram plants early and then Bina plants late, um, Aram gets zero and Bina gets three. If um, Aram plants late and Bina plants early, Aram would get three, Bina would get zero. If Aram plants late and then Bina plants late, both of them would get two. And we also just put little dots here to indicate we have the end of the tree. So 
This is a game tree depicting what happens between Aram and Bina. And what we can see is that each of the outcomes here corresponds to what we would see in one of the cells. 2 and 2 corresponds to the late late outcome. 3 and 0 corresponds to the late early outcome. 0 3 corresponds to the early late outcome. And 4 4 corresponds to the early early outcome. We see those connections between the normal form game in the table and the extensive form game in the game tree alongside. Okay, so let's look at a slightly nicer version of the game tree, which is um, more kind of beautifully drawn. So what we can see here is once again the choices of the different players. We've got Aram and Bina, the two players in the game. Aram can choose to plant early or to plant late. Bina can also choose to plant early or to plant late. And then you can see that we have their different payoffs also with the colors associated with the player who will receive the payoff at that point in the game. Now we said that we're going to use a um, way of solving this game called backward induction. Backward induction or backwards induction, depending on who you ask. Now here, what are we going to have to think about? We're going to have to think about the payoffs that the different players receive at different decision points in the game. So if you are Bina and you are thinking about what happens when um, Aram has planted late, what do you think of there? You're thinking, I can plant late and I can get a payoff of two, or I can plant early and I can get a payoff of zero. So what this tells us is that Bina, when choosing whether to plant early or plant late, she sees two versus zero, she will not plant early. So what we say is that she will prune that branch of the tree. She will cut it off. She's not going to choose that branch of the tree. Now, let's look at the other side of the tree. If Aram plants early, it's gone down here, then Bina is choosing whether to plant early or to plant late. If Bina plants early, she can get four. If she plants late, she will get three. Four is better than three, so in the sequential version of the game, if Aram has planted early, then Bina will plant early. She will prune the plant late branch. She will not play plant late if Aram has played plant early. Now we have to go back to Aram. Aram has to think to himself, should I choose to plant early or should I choose to plant late? Now he knows that if he plants late, then Bina will plant late. He knows that if he plants early, Bina will plant early. So he then has to contrast the payoffs that he receives in each circumstance. He can see that he will get four if he plants early and Bina plants early, or he will get two if he plants late and Bina plants late. So what's he going to do? He is going to prune the plant late branch. He is instead going to choose to plant early, and when he does so, what is um, Bina going to do? Bina will choose to plant early too. This means that the Nash equilibrium of this game in the sequential game is early, early. That's the um, unique Nash equilibrium of this, uh, of this extensive form interaction. Now, what we see here, just in case you're wondering, is also the same figure step by step with the um, branches that they're not going to play pruned off. So here I've got the branches pruned off for um, Bina, where the things that she's not going to play, late um, if Aram plays early and early if Aram plays late, those are pruned off like I had done in the previous figure. And then similarly, if we're trying to look at the full game, um, we can see there with plant late, Aram is not going to do that. He, We have the arrows here depicting what he will do, the blue arrow, and then the red arrow indicating what Bina will do she will go down and they will get payoffs of four and four. Now, what I would suggest you do now is take other games that we've looked at in the book so far in chapter one and see if you can translate those into your own game trees and then see if you can find the Nash equilibrium from those game trees in this new method that we've used, backward induction.